Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. You may remember around April 2019 this year, we had petitioned as a community to IBM to release to us some very old 31-bit operating systems such as VMXA and VMXA. And the reason why we ask for that is that we have wonderful distributions of MVS 3.8 in 24-bit and VM slash 370 in 24-bit with lots of compilers, lots of goodies in there. And we have put so, as much as we could into those distributions and made them really wonderful. But some of the things we couldn't have, such as 31-bit addressing, which would allow us to write bigger programs, up to two gigabytes. And for instance, in MVS 3.8, we don't have any Rex um, as part of MVS 3.8 because uh, that came with VMSP a little bit later. Um, and so we had petitioned IBM to give us uh, to the community, not even in open source, in closed source, 31-bit um, operating systems to play with and enhance and get our community's teeth um, into so that we could have fun and learn. IBM unfortunately did not grant uh, the request we made through the petition, but fortunately you know, a community cannot be stopped. When people are willing to do something, when there is a will, there is a way, and where where uh, developers, where programmers, where hackers want to achieve something, they cannot be stopped. And and that's why in early this year, some people had this actually made a distribution of uh, of Rex for our beloved MVS 3.8 as it comes delivered with TK4. And and uh, we I made a video about it and uh, it's called Brex. It's the Brex version of Rex, which we um, got to work on our uh, MVS 3.8 in the cloud and people have been using it and it's good. But as I said, you know, when there is a community is really um, determined to do something, you cannot stop them. And so the good folks uh, who released MVS, uh, Rex for MVS, uh, Peter Jacob and Mike Grossman, both from Germany, Peter from Munich and Mike from Berlin, I've met both of them in Europe just uh, this year, uh, they went and released a second version of Rex, which has now also vSAM support, which is, I think, as good as it gets when it comes to Rex on MVS. You do want to be able to access uh, vSAM datasets because that's where you start to be able to develop amazing applications. So, in this video, we'll go and install the new version on on a TK4, on a Virgin TK4 MVS 3.8 and see how the installation goes and then um, if we don't have enough time in this video to play with it and uh, write some vsam applications then we may be doing a second uh, installment of this i have myself not installed it yet this is as fresh and new uh, to me as it is to you when you go and install it and uh, i guess by me making some of the mistakes during installation uh, you, we can all learn from those uh, so that it's going to be smoother and easier for you guys before we go there, I just want to, as you saw in the intro of this video, I uh, we have the sad news to announce that Gerhard Pospichel passed away on November 7, 2019. He was a true giant for our communities, both in MVS and in, uh, in especially in the Hercules community. Um, Gerhard was born in Austria and has lived in Vermont for I don't know how many years. Uh, he made many of the things possible that we take for granted in our TK4, such as um, such as support for newer devices and many small and little things that uh, that uh, make our MVS 3.8 in TK4 so amazing. As you can see here, Gerhard from Bradford, uh, Vermont, had just posted uh, uh, some stuff as recently as a few months ago. And in fact, he had made some comments on some of the videos in the Moshix mainframe channel. And I had some interaction with him just maybe three months ago. And uh, he was gonna send me some uh, uh, some output, uh, um, some uh, 1403 printer output uh, that he had some dumps and some MBS compilations and uh, then i didn't hear from him anymore and i did fear that uh, that you know the worst could happen and indeed it has happened so thank you gerhard pospicial our 
thanks and prayers to the family and all those who are close to Gerhard. And, uh, and this is how we honor the people who have helped our community. Thank you, Gerhard, again, and rest in peace. Back to Brex or Brex. So uh, when you download, and that will make the download available in the description below this video, so you can go and get it. Once you download the zip file and you unzip it, you'll find a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, documentation uh, files in the directory. As you can see here, there's an installation guide, migration guide for those people who have the first version. There's a user's guide and there's a vSend guide. And then there is another feature in the second version of Rex as uh, delivered by Peter, Jacob and Mike Grossman. And that is formatted screens. So you can do kind of like what Kix is doing. And when I say Kix, I mean the original Kix by IBM as well as the Kix with a K uh, that we also have available for um, MVS 3.8 and VM even. And it shows us how to make um, applications with screens panels on um, on our beloved MPS 3.8 so uh, let's get to it so I have here everything that we need I downloaded it this is the zip file that you download and I unzipped it and then you get this directory right? in this directory there is a transmit file which we probably have to uh, get into our our MVS 3.8 and then run a job to unpack and install. Let's see what the installation instruction says. We need MVS TK4, which I have, ISPF support, which I don't run. ISPF is the an ISPF replacement by Wally. Um, it's not fully uh, released yet. Maybe it's going to be released with MVS TK4 update 9. Who knows? We strongly recommend testing in an isolated system yet. That's what we're going to do today and yeah so we need to use the appropriate upload facility of your thermal emulation okay so we're going to upload it um, and it says here it wants to find it in something like this okay so why don't we get an mbs 3.8 started um tk4 New. Let's unzip TK4. Okay, so this is a brand new installation of TK4. I go to the unattended folder as usual. As you can see here, because I do want to see the console, and they say set console mode, so we get full access to the MVS console. So that is done, and now I just run it with MVS. Okay, so that is now already coming up. Okay, so this has come up um, pretty fast. I'm running TK4 here on the virtual machine um, in my in my ESX VMware ESX cluster, uh, but the, those are very fast NVMe disks, so that's why this machine is so fast. So let's log in. Eric01, the password is see you later, default, and it says we need to upload this to the mainframe. So why don't we do that? Um, send to host, I'm gonna call this Rex, where is it? This is the transmit package, and we're gonna call it um Rx01 Rx Xmit. We do it of course in binary, it's TSO. Rx01, yeah, let's send this. It's uploading. I'm grabbing my coffee here. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so let's go see what happened. Rx01. And there it is. Okay, so now we need to read this in. So that means we need to create a job stream. I'll call it Herc01 CMTL uh, test CMTL VC. 
and I think it provides, yep, yeah, it provides beautifully all the JCL to make it easier for us. I think we can move this here to the side. We don't need to look at the console for now. Um, so then we have a bigger monitor. Good. So I copied all this. Perfect. I want to call it her. I know some people like the sound of my keyboard. Um, I've never really paid attention to it. And honest to God, I don't even have a name or brand on this keyboard. Oh, it's made by Code. Oh yeah, I think I remember. It's one of those coding keyboards that are designed for people who code a lot. CodeKeyboards.com. That's the website. So let's just go there very briefly. Code keyboards.com yeah that's the keyboard I have so now finally we have revealed the mystery uh, again with the switches are people really copying this stupid marketing gig by Apple that you should buy a computer because of <laughs> double inch key keyboards anyway this is the keyboard that I'm using here that's the exact one I like it a lot it's very compact has the function keys which for me is important and apparently you folks like the clicking sound of it so all right let's go back to the installation uh, let's see here class H that's fine receive um, as you know in MVS 3.8 we don't have a a um, an on like a, an interactive receive command such as you would have on ZOS or OS 390 however I'm writing a Rex based in fact utility to do this interactively uh, kind of stuck and in fact I did help ask um, both my friends Peter Jacob and Mike Roseman would help with that but uh, I was traveling and I kind of uh, I didn't continue but I, I may cont I may finish this utility to do an interactive receive of packages for uh, for our beloved 3.8 so here comes the data set name I think we called it Herc 01 breaks xmit nice and simple uh, the underscore here that's why I like this this editor so much the underscore tells us that it did find this data set it actually does exist um, where does it want to put it herc unpack yeah we'll leave it as it is right now because I don't want to mess but I wouldn't usually call things with a dollar I don't like that it used to be fashionable in the 80s in the mainframe world to do system data sets and and system programmer data sets start with a dollar so that you can keep them easily apart but I don't like that it looks ugly to me <coughs> excuse me let me leave it as it is right now so just to say that Peter and uh, Mike did the right job by calling it this way to me it's always looked a little weird let's run it okay um, I think we're good to go let's go job submitted job 001 makes sense star 3.8 and here it is oh jcl error unbalanced parenthesis in the dd statement statement number seven hmm let's go have a look oh yeah there is actually some stuff still missing <laughs> yeah uh, not Peter and Mike's fault it's my I can't even cut and paste <laughs> as I should what does that say about me okay uh, absolutely correct MBS you're right when you're right you're right okay switch and job terminated okay um, why don't I see the, re the return code because I didn't put in oh there's another error in the disposition field disposition identify positional parameters new catalog oh there's a whole part missing here again yeah that is not a legal statement it should be catalog yeah okay so you see here even cutting and pasting sometimes can be a challenge. Let's throw some in it again. Job number three, third attempt. 
All right, and now we have return code zero. It read it in perfectly. And as you can see here, it read in about I don't know, 12, 13 members. Clean up, install, readme, test, rex, unpack, build, command lib, jcl, link lib, proc lib. Okay, this is all in there. If you're using a different JCL to unpack the file, make sure the unit is in JS3390. Yeah, we did that, that right. Yep, we saw that. This all went fine. Okay, I actually like this installation documentation very much. Well done. Um, updated. Uh, 27th. Oh, this is European format, so it's uh, October 27th, just recently, a couple of days ago. Okay, so in the unpacking process, the container installation files will be expanded into different partition data sets. Okay, so we did step two, well, now we're doing step three. Submit the unpacked JCL from the unpacked library. Okay, so let's go see what we got here. Um, one, there it is. Unpack. We need to do the unpack. If you see it screen, yeah, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna change this already. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before submitting, the XMIT lib param must be changed to your dataset name on used in the expand. The default is yeah. The default is fine. I'll leave it as that. Yeah. So it wants us. It wants us to use. Um, this should be. The default is this one. So if we need to put it in there, why is it not already in there? Nobody knows. There must be a reason for it. The way I know these people, it's, they have a reason why they didn't make this already from the beginning the same. See what else happens here. Yeah. Okay. This looks looks good. I don't know. Submit. Job four. Okay, this one mostly fine. Some minor warnings here. But it looks like this one's fine. Yeah, I see lots of successfully. Looks mostly good to me. Um, and usually in a production environment, you would first check why we have those 0, 04. You would go and inspect that because you should. Um, see, like this one, why do we have a 4? You would go and inspect. It's typically. Maybe because we tried to delete something, but uh, that one fine. Okay, so let's not worry about that. Um, step four, submit install of the unpacked library. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I see an install here. Again, let's change that. Hi. Uh, Copy the Brex members into appropriate Sys2 libraries. Oh, it copies the, of course, it copies stuff in this in the link clip. Link clip is a very important data set. It's where it's almost like the the bin of, of Unix or Linux, slash bin, slash S bin, where you put stuff that everybody needs to be able to use. Um, uh, of course, uh, binaries and executables. You can also, of course, you put them in users, um, um, slash local, slash bin, but those will be add-ons but the ones that are almost like part of the operating system will go into bin that's kind of the same thing um, 
we have sys1 bin and then we have an extension which is sys2 that bin um, that link clip so we need to install we need to submit that uh, let's do it must be job 5 it is and let's go check 5 ok they just finished yep all return code zeros so it just um, yeah it copied all the members that it needs to have so that Brex can be correctly executed into linklib and do proglib and now we run the test Brex um, to I guess to test the installation very nice um, let's do it here like that Okay, so let's see what it's doing here. Yeah, it's running a couple of programs. We should have a ton of output. Um, it doesn't have my Queen's program, but I think it has my version of the Prime's program. I don't know. Um, I think, oh, they asked me actually to put in my uh, plotting program, my orbital pro uh, plot program Peter just asked me a couple of days ago so that they could include it here so maybe the next version will include the, my orbital plotting program so let's see what's happening here uh, test is running as you can see here primes uh, it's taken it's running time for me to have a as we like to say, in my part of the world, a schluck of coffee. If you know what a schluck of coffee is, schluck is Yiddish for a, um, like a uh, mouthful of coffee. I think it's also German. Okay, so test finished. Oh, good. All return code zero. So we properly tested and here's the banner. Very nice, we have a plotting program. Um, some prime numbers, if I'm not mistaken. And some other stuff. Blah, that went fine. Okay, now we need to clean up. Let's go. Where is the cleanup here? Again. C for cleanup. Uh, what does it do here? Remove the installation files. Oh yeah, it deletes the, yeah, that's fine. I agree with that, let's do it. Job number seven, let's see where it is. Oh, it's already done. And that went fine. Okay, so step number seven, now it's time to, to turn to test Rex. Please be advised, it's not ZOS Rex, so you might miss some functions, but also find functions not available in the original. Yes, thank you very much, Peter and Mike. We, that's what we like about it. So IBM wouldn't give us uh, a 31-bit operating system with Rex in it. So two guys just went and delivered it. Not only did they delivered it, in many ways they made it even better. So amazing work, Mike and Peter. Thank you so much on behalf of the community. So now we need to add Rex to the to the TSO logon. There are several ways to achieve it. The easiest into okay so let's go find that uh, where is it in sys1 cmd prog we need to go there and we need to change user logon standard logon locate locate it find instead of locate you would write here probably find because people are going to write locate like I just did. Find the line uh, STB logo. Here it is. Okay. All of that needs to go in there. Yeah. Then, then there is a. Okay. Well, let's do it like this. First, this part. 
the page break here is not helping. Okay, so let's do I-40. And then this line here, these two lines. Copying and pasting from PDF has become impossible. What is wrong with the people um, doing uh, PDF readers? Unbelievable. Okay, so we have that. We copied it all in. Looks fine. Uh, the update was uh, completely manual process. This device to take a backup of user login. Okay, remove old. Brex libraries optional. We don't have any old Brex libraries. Okay, so let's test the user logon. Logon perp01. Okay, that went well. Mm. So let's write a simple Rex program to test it. Where are we going to put it? Okay, that's where it searches for CCU proc, sys exec, sys proc. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, sys u exec. We don't have that. Sys exec. No, sys proc. We don't have any of that, so let's just do it here. Um, rex test. Okay. Test of rex two for MDS eight. I might and either caps on, although of course rex is not caps uh, sensitive. Say hello world, hello wonderful world. Okay. Okay. So that is in here. So let's copy the whole thing. Actually, like this. And we go Rex. You need to you need to enclose it within the um, quotes here because otherwise it will detach the high level qualifier to it. Hello, wonderful world. Well, what was wrong? Weird. Why am I getting its correct syntax? A wonderful world. Well, this kind of shows me that we have. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually what's happening. This should work. Not really sure why this is not working as advertised. I'm sure that my computer watching me know exactly what I did wrong. Where is the test stuff? It's in Brex samples. Okay, let's go look at that. Mm. 
Well, I, I just do it the same way. Maybe I should do it in smaller tabs. Maybe it is. Well. Yeah. So now it went well. I think it was just the uh, the stuff at the end of the line, the numbering. That worked fine. So we tested it. Rex works. Um, so that was pretty simple. Uh, Brex was developed by Vasilis Vlachudis, who I think is a resident of France. Um, it has been compiled with Jason's JCC compiler, um, which I think is a better compiler than GCC. So if you do any C on MBS, I would use JCC. Um, P7 interface by Scott's VSAM API. Yeah, of course, Vasilis, Jurgen, who was the maintainer of TK4, Jason Winner, the person who wrote the JCC compiler, Wally, uh, who's the ISPF guy, Greg Price, who uh, writes the monitor here, this one. Uh, if you do three, this is Greg Price. Um, Steve Scott is the person who wrote the VCM, the VCM API. And of course, the source code is here on GitHub. I will point. Uh, to the um, here it is. I will point to this uh, repository in the description below this video. Now we did one first part. Let's go see what we can do with it now. Well, that was mm, not what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, here, this looks like an application, vSAN. Okay. There's a control card. Initial insert of student records. Okay, so here is a VSAM application. Address TSO, so right now we're talking to TSO. Um, let's see if we have any documentation on this. So let's see what we have. Users guide, VSAM guide. We decided to integrate the interface as host commands rather than Brex functions. I think that's the right decision. It is now similar to the execIO host command for sequential data sets. The host command name is VSAMIO. For example, VSAMIO open. Okay. So limitation, restrictions, the implementation is only tested with unique cluster definitions, okay? Not with type sub allocation, which requires defined space. Yeah, that's clear. The unique specification does not allow reuse cluster definition, which will be necessary for the initial loading of an MTK LES. Okay, so mm, initializing empty this uh, VSAM file. An empty VSAM cannot be directly processed by program. That's why you always had a an empty record, like a 000 record in COBOL, when you were working with VSAM file. There was always one um, first record. The procedure to achieve this is um, by the null record. Okay, yeah. After this exercise, the VSAM file can be updated. Uh, yes, okay. The key must be part of the records. So nevertheless, you must additionally specify the key in the following commands so VSAM read, load, yeah. Okay, because as you know, VSAM KSDS is like a, almost like an index database. Um, so you need to provide the key for all these functions. Return code, the system event. Trust okay, the V RX VSAM runs in it within the address space, so it's a separate task. Okay, we have that VSAM commands in Brex VSAM open right key. 
Okay, here's the application example that we're look, looking at here. The installation file contains the Brex vSAM. It's a working sample of a student database using fictitious student entries. You can submit Rex scripts in the out of K. Okay. So let's go check that out. Student creates the C here stands for create. So let's go create a VSAM. Uh, should be an ID cams, which it is. Uh, I for ID cams. Uh, that's a whole lot of memory for an ID cams, but what do I know? Um, so this creates the original cluster. Um, ID cams, that's the normal node record that we were talking about. So VSAM student, student, record size, tracks. Okay, so we have the index file and the data file. That's fine. Why don't we run this? Let's see what happens. Okay. Start 3.8. Where did it go? Okay, so this went fine. I created... No, this is not it. Yeah, that's not the one. Incorrect use of ampersand in the notify field. Yeah. Okay, so notify. Okay. Job nine. Finish with eight. because yeah that's normal uh, here you would usually put in a a directive to change the condition code back to zero so what uh, I can explain that so here we have delete command and if the delete tries to delete something that doesn't even exist which in our case is true uh, it doesn't exist then it will of course uh, put in a return code of eight in this case what you should do is you should set the return code uh, to zero Okay, so ID cams uh, set return code to zero. You'll see here. Yeah. So this is what you would do here. Um, okay. So now if we run this again, we will have a return code of zero. Well, here. So let's try this again. Again, I do all this, I make all these mistakes and find all stuff out so you don't have to. Job 10, return code zero this time, right? Um, so here we already made our first suggestion and contribution back to this amazing Brex uh, distribution to Mike and Peter just insert the reset because now you can see here function completed it deleted it okay um, so it was already um, it was already it existed so it, this time it actually created a zero because it already existed if it didn't exist it would come up with eight but then if the max condition code is less than less equal than eight then it would set, set the max condition code back to zero um, so it would always have zero, okay? Small thing. Um, this inserts the student records, okay? Let's look at the other one. Uh, what is it? I, okay. Her zero one insert. Um, that's fine. Z 
it looks fine. or the notify field. Okay. So one. And it takes this. Let's do that. Let's go find out. Take it from here. Which takes the students. Why is this not working? Okay, so this time went through. It didn't like the ampersand. So there should be here a controlled record, which we put in, yeah, here it is. Insert it, so of course it does a check. If it's not in there already, then it inserts it. That's proper programming. Very good. Good job, okay. Um, read with key okay so um, now we're reading back in with the key so we know it doesn't like the ampersand for whatever reason uh, okay let's run it job 13 highest condition code Zero. Uh, where is job 13? Here it is. Yeah. Well, this is really amazing. Let's look at the performance of this. It was very fast. An eighth of a second. Let's look at the application again. Mm. It uses student key, so let's go and check it out. Because it does, it, well, all it does in this JCL is it executes a Rex function, which is in the samples data set. Uh, sorry, so figure four. Uh, it actually executes this script. So why don't we try to read this? Differently, no shakes. S thirty seventy, because we know this is a record in the control database. Uh, control record in the database. So let's get out of this. Submit it again. Okay. For job fourteen. Oh, it didn't find S370 Moshix. Oh, because I think we need to reverse it. It's Moshix, okay. Let's do that. S370 Moshix. I think that's how I wrote it down. I'm not sure anymore. Job 15. Yeah. Okay, so it found me in electrical engineering. So the control record works. Perfect. Now, uh, insert student records. Okay. So insert student records. 
let's see what the Oh, here it, it reads the whole database sequentially, all of it. Uh, work zero one sequential. It should now student n n. Let's first. Uh, yeah, here it reads all of them. Very simple. <laughs> Look how short this is, and there's a lot of comments here. So we first allocate the file, um, then we open the vSAM database, and then locate, we just locate them all, read, next. So we just read them all through in a forever loop until we are done, and then we close. I mean, it's very, very simple. Let me get out of here. Okay, so let's run it. Maximum condition code zero. Let's see what it came out with. S sequential. Yep. Worked fine. Uh, query records by using formatted screens. Student LL. But that's the most interesting one. Okay, it, uh, you remember at the beginning of this video I said that one of the other fe big features of Rex, or Rex 2 for MVS is we can have panels, or what the way they call it is formatted screens. So, I don't know how you would execute that. So that's what we have to do here. Yeah. Let's run it this way. Oh, what just happened here? Funny, funky state here. Okay. Ah. Oh. Let's see if that works. found is that so oh I know why <laughs> there is the the swap to the s and the at the u and the t okay so it's supposed to be so Rex Here. And then I think it's studental. What is that? TSC apples. Let's go in there. Yeah, it's not finding it because. SU It's not there This member is not there Hmm 
this one is there. And this looks like a panel. So why can I not execute that? Let's try. Yeah. Okay, so S370. No. No shoots. Yes. Perfect. So it found me. I can make some changes. I'm definitely a male. Fin. It says you have to put in fin. Fin lace in there. Okay. That worked. Yeah, it's a nice little application. I don't know how can we change though. Yeah, we cannot change it. We can only query. Information system, CD, put in here. Okay. Well, it, it works. Um, I think we can extend it, right? So that we could say uh, first name. Let's see what it comes back with. Um, you can see here. Mason, Miley, Michelle, Maisley, Mohammed, my Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, but let's put an S and now S three seven should come out. Not even. Okay. I don't fully understand it, but let's go have a look. Okay, so it has function key handling, which is nice. Offset. Yeah. So it needs to know the position, the record structure. Um, you could probably do this a little different, you know, with the table, which you could import for, so you would have always the same definition for all your applications. But this has a lot of potential. I mean, this is really amazing. Um, Reads okay, so yeah, uh, this works fine. Why don't we try to run my orbital calculator? Let me go get it from my uh, ZPDT system. Okay, I'm on my ZPDT system here. Uh, so level. You can see here, that's uh, 6.4 running on my one CPU ZPDT. It's actually been running since September 25th. It's very stable. Uh, okay, so let's see what we have. Orbit 3, that's the one we're interested in. So, um, where is it? Yeah, so why don't we copy all of this and see if we can move it over here. Uh, bricks. that not appropriate okay first this part just the main part Then we just copy the function. Well, that's actually, yeah. 
that's not all of it. There's two functions. Okay, so exit and then a sixty and then the square root function. If the square function then needs to work for very large numbers because in orbital mechanics you sometimes deal with very large numbers. Okay, so we have that. And uh, Rex orbit, it's all we should really execute, right? Return VV unexpected or unmatched end. Let's go have a look. Um, there it is. So let's compare these two. and periaps that is fine please input all that is fine and exit and then velocity there's a procedure here um, the gravity constant and that's earth of 5.97 to the 24th power in kilograms. Then we have this part here. This looks fine. And then we have the procedure for the square root. And that seems to be looking fine as well. Unexpected line forty four, so forty four return VV. Um, well, this could be an incompatibility of Brex with Rex. I'll have to talk to Mike and Peter about it it's not returning this value. Why is it not returning this value? I'm calculating square root and that did embark, so that should be fine. Square root of V2. But it's not returning. Well, I think it's correct code, but let's see how they do it in other parts. Oh, without the breaks, okay. Just do it like this, then return TV. Okay, so let's try again. Unexpected or unmatched end line 44. Again, oh, it doesn't want the return, the end. I think I got it. It doesn't like this end here because we have the return and the return is the end. Okay. Okay, let's try that again. Please periaps and that's we're gonna do seven thousand kilometers. Apple apps we do four hundred twenty four thousand. Increments. 
Yes, that works beautifully. So this is the plot of the velocities, the velocities we need for a transfer orbit to a geostationary orbit. Uh, roughly, I mean, yeah. So that works fine. So I will send this code afterwards to my computer, so they can put it in as examples. But uh, so there's 7,000 kilometers. We're going to go to 9,000 kilometers um, in 50 kilometers increments. So we need to accelerate to 8,000 meters per second. And of course, that's an eccentric orbit. Perfect. Works fine. So um, I think that what we saw here is that we can uh, do things that Brex2 installs, or several things. Brex installs easily. Uh, let me log off from here from my ZPDT system. Okay, that's done. Um, we can install it easily. It has formatted screens, which we looked at in the query for the students database. We also saw that uh, the VSAM uh, is, works flawlessly. It's very easy to use. It's um, implemented as an external command, kind of like exec IO. So that, uh, as you know, Rex itself doesn't have any IO capabilities. You always have to refer to something on the outside. And so that's how they implemented it. And then we saw that I can take a VM uh, ZVM, modern ZVM script that I wrote on my ZPDT system for orbital mechanics, which I also used for another video. Um, no shakes, YouTube, uh, JSON, let's see. Uh, yeah, in this video, that's the script that I'm using. So, that's the same script that I'm using here, right? Which we then, yeah, that's the exact same script. So you can see, and we use the script afterwards to pass the output to a Go language um, script or program, which takes it and produces a plot. That's it. So it's the exact same thing. Uh, here, of course, we were talking to Rex on ZOS 2.1 at the University of Leipzig. And uh, under that same machine, we had a Linux running, so Linux for, for the mainframe. And there we had this Go program running that was taking this from ZOS, the same Rex script that we just saw was running there on ZOS. It was producing this output. It was taking this output and then plotting the velocities for the orbits for a transfer orbit. So exact same thing. We took it over here and it runs fine. All right. So uh, we can start with 6678 just 300 kilometers above Earth. Um, then we go to a transfer orbit of 12,000. And then we do uh, 500 kilometers implement. We should have the same results. You can see here, um, it works beautifully. So, um, oops, we can close this. That's the keyboard that I was mentioning and everything else works fine. There is several other uh, guides here, user guide, which I recommend you read, especially when it comes to the number representations and for hex numbers. We have a migration notice for people who are running the first version. Uh, it's actually very easy. You just switch to the new version and uh, remove the old ones. And the formatted screens guide. I think that's the one that a lot of people, I know one person in the in the community who's been writing Kicks with a K applications uh, very, very busily. And now I think we can easily switch also to this kind of environment to write full panel applications with vSAM. So the, this is basically like a, like a six in a Kicks environment with uh, vSAM, just exactly the same. Um, the only difference is here is that every user would run a, an environment in their own address space, whereas the huge advantage of Kix, of course, the reason why it can handle so many transactions, I think r worldwide it runs 11 million transactions a second, uh, is that it's a single address space or 
well, you can split them, but um, all you know, many applications run within a single address space. There is very, very minimum uh, context switching going on, and so that's why it's a performant. And um, and when it con there's a context switch, it doesn't validate the TLB most often. So uh, this works fine. I think that uh, Peter and Mike did a mighty good job here. Uh, the documentation is top notch. Um, so some tiny little things that we thought that we could make better, such as resetting the return code on installation time. Um, but other than that, the everything is fine. Documentation is fine. The installation jobs are fine. Everything is correct and works very, very nicely. So I think that we just stop it here. We thank our friends, Mike and Peter, for the good job they've done. We now have a very, very valid Rex on MK, uh, MVS TK4. And when the new version of TK4 comes out, TK4 Update 9, I am I know already that Jurgen, the maintainer, has will put in this new version and many other um, things that have come over the last few years, such as a better algo, um, uh, a COBOL fix for the XREF output uh, during the compilation process, um, I, Bob Palmenter's fixes, so that you can also it can also close the spool, and also be able to release terminals and many other improvements. I mean, I, I can think of probably two dozens right now at the top of my head. So um, all those will go into update nine whenever Jurgen releases it. It could be months now. It could be just three, four months, maybe for Christmas. We'll all get this beautiful gift from Jurgen. We're all eagerly waiting for it. And I know that I'll be one of the early testers when it comes out, because I also tested eight and seven when they came out. So all this works beautifully. So this was fun. I hope you also had fun watching and I hope you all start playing with Rex version or Brex version two for MVS. And as I said, I will point to the download um, uh, repository in the description below this folder. If you like this video, please take just a split second to press on the thumbs up button. I always appreciate that. And subscribe to the Moshix Mainframe channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you very much. Goodbye.